Thanks for checking out Symphony on YouTube. Please be sure to subscribe and like our videos for updates. The Special Public Works Program is a program that is actually not new in terms in, in the world of work. It's a program that the ILO has actually supported and approved many years ago in different parts of the world uh, before we decided to design something for ourselves here, uh, something like it. It was a program that was introduced in the early 19th century during the periods of great drought. In countries where the main means of subsistence was agriculture, there were periods of drought where the farmers could not go to the farm and could not um, harvest their produce and then feed themselves. So governments of those days, during the time of also the Great Depression, they would say, okay, they should come and for that period of droughts where they cannot harvest, they should come and perform some public functions for a short period of time until the rains return. And in return, the, federal, the government at that time will give them stipends to keep them going until the rains return and they'll go back to their farms. So it is actually a hybrid of social intervention, pure social intervention, and work also. It's a hybrid, because government's intention is just to make sure they give them something to survive. But in return, government will require you to come and do some public work, just maintain public infrastructure, clear drainages, uh, paint public buildings, repair things for government, minimal work. And in return, not very high profile work, in return, government will then give them money. So it's a hybrid. That's the design of those days. So when we wanted to introduce it here, the president did a pilot scheme because he thought perhaps we needed to test run it to see whether it can apply here. So the first thing the president approved was that we should do eight states at that time. And not all the local governments, just five, five local governments in eight states. Originally, that was in 2019, late 2019, when I just became minister. So we started implementation in January 2020 in eight states. If I remember them very well, Jigawa, Edo, Ebonyoso. I can't you know, remember them off by heart. And we just started one month of the implementation when COVID struck. So we could not actually complete, complete it at that time. Uh, the federal government only released one month stipend at that time to pay those... Um, in those eight states. So when there was a lockdown at that time and small businesses suffered, um, so many people could not, especially those who depend on daily pay, the people that were worst hit by the COVID lockdown was the, pe the people who go out daily. And I'm sure you know them, they call them the laborers. If you go to the highway now, along um, any of these highways in Abuja, Yanya and all that, go there every 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, as you're coming to work or coming to the city, you will see them by the side of the road with shovels and all that. They just wait for anybody to come and engage them for any sight. And on the, at the end of that day, you must give them something to take home. Those who carry concrete too at building sites, you must pay them at the end of that day because they survive on daily pay. Don't wait for even week or end of the week or end of the month. There are people like that in this country, and we must realize that. Not we that at times we rely, rely on monthly pay or we are businessmen. So the president was very concerned about this kind of people. Say, look, this lockdown, if people don't receive money daily, there will be a revolution. No? We need to quickly react and find them something. So he said, look, this pilot scheme, expand it. Let it cover all the states and all the local governments now, quickly. It was a quick response by the president. 
let's cover all the states, all the local governments. And it was so audacious. The president said one 1,000 per local government. Not 500, not 100 people per local government. 1,000 persons per local government. It was meant to be so, you know, or it is still meant to be very, you know, uh, expansive like that. So, well, since it was the first time that this kind of huge program involving so many persons to be executed within a short time was introduced. Not, it has never been like that in history. To a short, just a short time, 704,000 persons must be reached. We now said, okay, what do we do? And then, again, we had to ensure too that the design of the program was maintained. And what is that design? The 1,000 persons should ordinarily be resident within those local governments. The 1,000 persons. So that we will have an even spread in respect of the distribution of the money. It's huge funds from public purse, very huge funds. But it is going directly to the people. At the same time as you maintain infrastructure, and you build infrastructure in Nigeria, you build railroads. You must also remember, like, the, like we have come to know it, the stomach infrastructure. You must balance both. So people should not wait for, will not be waiting forever and die until uh, the big things happen. The small things should be happening before the big things happen. So the president said, okay, uh, we should ensure that the spread is achieved, that, you know, so that we, the money goes to every nook and cranny of the country. But at the same time, the president said, look, ensure that everybody is paid by bank accounts and BVN, so that it will not be those kind of cash we're used to pay, you know, and it is susceptible to fraud. But once you pay through bank accounts and through BVNs, you can have an audit trail of every single payment, so there will be zero fraud, not even 1% uh, margin of error, because every single payment can be audited and traced to a, a particular person who has a BVN, a living person. Uh -huh, there won't be any ghosts. So well, it was huge, but we set out to do it. First was the selection process. We wanted to ensure that we localize the selection process so that we won't sit down here in Abuja and pretend to know 1,000 persons in Karanamoda, up north, or uh, Owode, Oniri in south, or in the west, or one, uh, this thing, one local government in the east. We can't be here in Abuja. So we said, okay, the people, the local people should be involved in selection of the participants, localize it so that they know themselves. And where the institutions that can easily identify these people who need this money very well within their locality are the churches. We brought in the churches. The mosque, we brought in the mosque. The market women leader, we brought in the, we brought in the market women leaders. The National Union of Road Transport Workers, those boys, who they, call the, they call it the garage boys in South South in Worry. We brought them in. Then we brought in politicians too, of course, who can also know, you know that. But we mix them up so that it won't look like, like programs in the past, in past governments, they will just hand it over and give only to politicians. So we brought in a mix of all of these people. Civil society too were on the selection committees to select these people. There were some uh, resistance to say, look, politicians should just handle it alone. But I stood my ground. I said, no, let's a multi-sectorial committee. This, committee must be multi-sectorial so that people who are not following politicians should also have access to the program. All right? Uh, so we did that, and then uh, the process went on. The process selection went on for some time. Uh, it was not as easy as we thought, because a thousand persons per local government is a huge number. So, and then after selecting them, we now had the task of going to make sure they open accounts so that we don't go and deploy cash to those, deploy cash to the states and say, start paying. That would have been a mess. It would have been a mess. So we said, go and all these people you have selected, after the selection went on for three months and all that, we said, now, the real big star, go and start opening accounts for these people. At that point, we were questioned. And I want you to please understand why particularly I designed it this way. I went back to Mr. President and said, Mr. President, give me approval to use select banks to register these people. 
let me select them and then register them afresh. He asked why. I said, look, the reason is simply this. If we say, once we collect 1,000 persons and bring their names and their existing account numbers, which is the design of every other program, I'm not condemning others, but because this one has a unique feature of 1,000 persons per local government. If you say, go and bring accounts as you like, so that it would, make, it would have made our job easy, really, lazy way of approaching it, it would mean that somebody will bring a hundred names, one of the maybe people we selected, uh, or we, people we identified to select persons, they will bring a hundred names for, say, uh, one local government in Abia State. I'll give you an example. With their bank account number, they will say this is for Bende local government, for example. But actually, those hundred people we have received and their bank account numbers, they will be living in Lagos State. No way to know. They will be living in Lagos, not Abia. And on and on. You now have a situation where because people have more access to banks in urban areas, you will just, you will just defeat the whole purpose of this program. Most of the 77,000 persons will now be concentrated in the cities. Because most of the rural people, they don't even have bank accounts, they don't have, you know, and all that. So that was a clever thing we did to say, to ensure that ordinarily you will have 98% success if you register them afresh. Go to your, we now engage these banks and made an agreement with them. We gave them the list per local government, the list per local government, and told them to tell their branches. They now forwarded this list to the branches. There are various branches across the country. This is banks, six or seven of them. Yes, seven of them. And directed the, the, the participants to so go to those local branches. We gave them the addresses. UBA, for social and so local government, in number 71 Market Road. Go there and register. So the banks were up and doing with us. So at the end of the day, we achieved that fair distribution. We ensured, because it's unlikely that people in one uh, state, because of the 60,000 that we achieved at the end of the day, will now travel. It's very unlikely. Travel to go and register in another state when they have, and then go back again to the city. It's very unlikely. So in most of the, uh, we calculated that it is actually the locals there that will go to those branches to register. We, 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 asked, we calculated that 95%, you know, success will achieve it to make sure they are resident there. Maybe with a 5% margin of error. I hope you understand. That was why we, we select so that people should understand why we decided on that. When people say, ah, why didn't they just bring their accounts? Why didn't they just bring their accounts that they have before? In any case, we also reasoned that most of these people we are, we are targeting because no government had targeted this kind of people in a large way for a long time. People who are daily pay earners, this uh, itin they call them itinerant workers, itinerant. They don't have a place they go every morning to say, this is my work. Today they are in East, tomorrow they are in the north of uh, Abuja, tomorrow they, are, they find them on another site in the south of Abuja. Itinerant workers, they call them itinerant, the world of work calls them itinerant workers. Most of them, this kind of category of people, they don't have bank accounts. They don't. And yet we needed to pay them and we didn't want to pay them cash. So we brought so many people into the financial net by this program. We brought people, so many people into the banking nets in this country. So having done that, all of this delayed the kickoff. Delayed the kickoff and we eventually started in January, but it was also staggered because some states did not start until February, so much, depending on their local circumstances, but we started off in January. Now, we have a distribution, a fair distribution of each local government and the projects we are undertaking in each of the local governments. As I speak with you, uh, we are we're about to start running programs on radio and TV in the next one or two weeks. We paid for airtime to show Nigerians pictorials from across the country. We have actually, 
we had people across the country bringing in pictorials as the work, we're going, the work was going on. So we're going to show pictorials. We're going to see them in, on television in the next two weeks on Radio 2. We interview live persons as we're working. We showed sites, public sites, as they were before. And we showed them after the work in many local governments. We had challenges in areas that had insurgency, that have insurgency. Um, also some areas in the country recently that um, had security challenges. We had some of those um, challenges, so that's a fact. But we still managed to do a few things and we'll see pictorials from those, um, from those places. So we now, we now told the bank, now the design of payments was this, which is what we're coming to, and the recent maybe seeming complaint you heard. The design is that for payment, the ND has its accounts in central bank. So the Ministry of Finance releases the monies to the ND accounts in the central bank because government institutions, they don't have accounts in private bank again. So the money was never in any private bank. Take note, nobody kept any money anywhere. It's in the central bank, it's with government accounts. The moment the banks registered the people, registered the persons, they passed it on to the NDE to say, look, these 1,000 names you gave us, we have opened accounts for them. These are the accounts. The NDE, in turn, we pass the instruction to the accountant general and say, from those are our accounts, pay these people now. So they release the money straight from the central bank into the accounts in the banks. Individual, not bulk to that, into those individual accounts, 20,000 20, to the one one account, direct from central bank. That is the design for payment. Now, when the account numbers came back to us and we wanted to pass it on to central bank, we did our own checks. And then we discovered that many persons also wanted to defraud the federal government. And that was a good thing we decided on the BVN. After a check of all the names, before we authorized payments, and payments would have started in January. Payments would have started in January. We discovered that you had a situation where five different names on the list of a local government, we have one BVN account appearing in those five different names. Because most of these people in the localities, they don't understand how BVN works. So they went ahead and opened different accounts with different names, hoping to receive, that person will receive, for example, 100,000 Naira per month, five different accounts. Instead of 60,000, he will receive 300,000 for three months and deprive other Nigerians of the stipends. We now discovered so many of such in the, in the register they brought us. So we quickly halted payments. We didn't start in January, which we have started. We, start, we stopped and said, look, the banks, you, don't, you have not finished your job. You just, sent, you just sent names to us like that. Go back and clean up these registers. Clean them up. Ensure you eliminate all of these errors and we'll check them again. At that point, for some of us, for me, I was a former prosecutor in EFCC for 15 years. Now I'm in government. I don't want to fall into the same error for which I was prosecuting people. Any program I run must be fraud free. The integrity of the process was more important to me than making people happy on time to say pay them, pay them, pay them, and everybody will be jubilating. And then you see all kinds of gaps. I'm sorry, I said in the extreme, I was prepared to return the entire money to federal government. Let me be accused of not payment than fraud. You can't charge me for non payment now. <laughs> so it's better I don't pay then I pay and there is fraud. So at that point I said no, go back. So it took another rigorous process, of around one month or two months. They checked and eliminated. That time people were crying already, we have not received, we have not received payments. I said don't listen to them. It is our own integrity that is at stake here. They can lie, cry to high heavens, I'm sorry, I apologize, but we must do this before we pay. That's why there were these cries of non-payment, non-payment. Eventually, we tried to, we got it right in March or April, but in batches. So 
They couldn't take all at once. They were clarifying them in batches. So UBA, for example, we clear 20,000 persons. I say, pay these ones now. We have these ones are clear. We are doing working on the others. Pay this one, 10,000 more. Fidelity, pay. We have cleared 30,000 names. These ones are pure. Uh, okay, now pay them. So we started paying in batches. So uh, that's what um, happened, and that was why the seeming delay in payment. Um, but guess what? It also affected the numbers we needed to also engage and pay because those people now had blocked, they had blocked the register for other genuine Nigerians who would have wanted to register for the program. So there were many complaints of people who wanted to register. They said it was already filled up and all that. And, but then we didn't want to start doing late registration. So for some local governments that already had 1,000 persons on the register, we said, okay, we have completed 1,000 there. By the time the work started and we started eliminating and checking like that, some now dropped to 800. Some dropped to 700 and something. I hope you understand. Because we now started having gaps. After the cleaning up of the bank registers, the account, they started, we started having gaps. It was dropping. It was dropping. <laughs> because of this elimination of double triple registration, multiple registration. So we began to have an average of 700 per local government, 800 per local government, as the case may be. But then the work had started, but we started paying. Um, as at last week, when the complaints became so much, we called the banks to a meeting last week and said, why are you delaying in giving us the verified accounts. Because at the point, the banks thought the, the thing was so huge for them. They were also slowing down. They were slowing down. But we said, unless you give us verified accounts, we will not pay. The existing ones you brought before were free for Just verify them very well, eliminate before we pay. So the banks began to, began to delay. So last week, I'm sure you saw the communique we passed around. Was it last week or early this week? Yeah? Last week that we met the banks. No, we met the banks in, 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 on Monday. Monday. So Monday. We met the banks on Monday this week. So I'm sure you saw the resolution we reached with the banks. We signed each and every one of them. We now said, look, some of these banks that were so slow in registering people, between the six of seven banks, they, 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 they cut out catchment areas for themselves. They say, UBA, they met and said, UBA, you take only this local government. Fidelity will take this local government. And many of them could not meet up with those people there in those local governments. So we now said, look, now any of these branches you see in any of these banks, so long as you are a participant, go there and they will register. So we made the list available in that local government to all the banks. After all, you cannot do double BVN. If you go and register in Fidelity and UBA, your BVN will seek you out since we have BVN. So that's what we are doing now, to shore up those gaps now, those gaps we have, to shore them up and to ensure that most of the accounts are verified and we pay them. Um, so just to give you a report, as of this morning, um, that's the latest as of this morning, we have moved from where we were on Monday. We actually started paying three, three months now. So some people received, because they have gone far, some had finished their work, so we started paying 40,000 too, in addition to the 20,000 we paid earlier. So we are now paying bulk two one months at the same time, at once. So this morning, by this morning now, or yesterday, so many people have received their 40, 40,000 who had received 20 before. Those who had not received before, who had finished their work, they are paying them 60,000 direct now, not just 20, 20,000, they are paying 60,000 bulk. We started paying that now, bulk 60,000. So you hear jubilation across the country as at um, this morning. You know, when I hear some of the journalists laugh, you know, some of you, you are rich. This 60,000 will save so many lives across the country. I'm telling you, a grinding machine, I just discovered a grinding machine to, to grind pepper. It's about 45,000 or 40,000. Somebody just told me the amount recently. I said, what? Some women... And I begged my people when they were selected, I said, give we men this money more. Men will go and drink a gogoro and pan wine with this money. Women are caregivers. They will manage this money well. They will put the grinding machine, for instance, there. Every day they will be making an average of five or 10,000 grinding tomatoes, pepper, beans for people. 
and they will use that one to pay school fees to feed the family. We men, yeah, we. We we'll go and drink tombo. <laughs> I'm fighting for the women. <laughs> Some people in villages, they go around looking for a loan of 25,000. For weeks, nobody to give them. 25,000 loan to add to their small businesses. Don't forget that we're not talking of undergraduates here or graduates. We are talking of itinerant workers. This is surely going to reflate the economy. It's, it's going to the, and the way we designed it and ensured it good went around to the, all the local government, it's going to reflate the economy from the very bottom because they are going to add this money to their businesses. So there'll be a lot of jubilation across the country for that. But then we, are, we still have some gaps to fill. Um, next few weeks, we should be rounding off, but we'll have gaps to fill. As of this morning, we have paid 413,000, 413,000, 630 persons out of the 774,000. So we've achieved about 60% of the 774,000 as of this morning. I repeat the figure, we paid 413,000, 630 persons as of this morning. And this one, all of these people have received 60,000 naira each. And the total we have paid, this 413,000 is 24 billion, 24 billion, 817,000, 800,000 naira. That is 24 billion, 817,000, 800,000 naira. Actual money given to Nigerians and in their pockets for them to to cushion the effect of post-COVID, the post-COVID effect, and the very grassroots that we're talking about. The breakdown per bank, we can make that available. Breakdown per bank, and we have a further breakdown. We can just, I think we can just do photocopies after the, and then give you that. In terms of the micro, the breakdown. Access Bank, 59,000, Fidelity, 83,000, UBA, 80,000, FCMB, 16,000 persons, Zenith, 59,000 persons, FCMB, and then per, per states. And then the actual, the eventual, the actual names, and that will be in a database. We can get it anytime you want in the spirit of transparency, the names of each person paid. We can make that available at the end of the program. But all of these are available here today in terms of the breakdown for each state, each bank, each state, and what they have received so far. So we have achieved about 60% of the payment, we hope to close this gap. Um, in a large program like this, we may not achieve the 774,000 to the last, last number, I hope you know that. Uh, but for me, if we achieve and pay up to 600,000 persons or to 700,000, 600 plus, we would have achieved a lot. The rest balance will return to the federal coffers. If we cannot have real people who will come and be entitled to that, real people with real identity with, with correct BVN. So we will not resort to paying ghosts. We will not resort to any underhand tactics of paying ghosts. We will return the balance. For those who said, oh, they struggled to enter or they entered, they could not pay it and they could not be identified, wait for the next time. Luckily, the president, as part of the larger, broad, the broader uh, poverty reduction strategy of the federal government, this program has been approved in the last, I think the last uh, FEC, um, four weeks ago or five weeks ago, FEC, the memo was brought by Federal Minister of Finance. Federal Minister of Finance, this is one of the various programs that will, the, pro the government will be implementing every year. So it, it may, it, in fact, we have approved it. Well, the, depending on the availability of funds, it will not become a bi-yearly bi or yearly affair every year now. So people will always wait, they will come into these nets, those who could not. Um, uh, benefit from it this time around. But 413,000 Nigerians have been paid. That's a huge number still. Uh, so people should not say that the program has failed. It has not failed. We have achieved 60%. Before the end, we may achieve, for purpose of payment, we may ask for extension for one month from Mr. President to ensure that those who worked actually paid. But they must be verified before they are paid. Now, we also have a problem. Why it even came down to 413? It should have been more than 500,000. We have the breakdown of figures of accounts that rejected the money. So the money bounced back 
to center, but as they paid because of incomplete issues too. So do you have the breakdown there of the. So when they paid, the money bounced back. It could not be credited. It, it bounced back. So this 413 is also not. It's more than this, and it's not our fault. There are accounts that have issues. You have it. Aha, uh -huh, yes. So we have it here, state by state. We'll make this a